cataractcoach.com quiz for a pupil like this. Do you use hooks, rings, stretch it out, do nothing? It's an 80-year-old patient who takes Flomax, which is Tamsulosin, for prostate issues. And as we know, that also causes floppy hair syndrome. So first thing we'll do is inject anesthetic, so preservative-free lidocaine, under the iris. And notice it goes under the tissue. So hopefully it'll have some effect there on the muscle. We're now going to use our dispersive viscoelastic, and look how we inject it differently. We're doing the technique of viscomedriasis, as popularized by Dr. Osher. And just with that alone, we're able to expand the pupil, at least temporarily, to a little bit larger. So now we'll make our main incision. Important that we make a good incision here. And we don't want to have a short incision or poorly placed incision, because that may make the iris prolapse worse. And now it's time for our capsular access. Well, you can tell I'm not going to use hooks or rings or other devices. In fact, we don't even need to stretch the pupil. We'll make a sufficiently large capsular rexus. We want about a five and a half millimeter rexus. So look carefully, the rexus edge is under the iris. We're able to go around 360 degrees, and the entire time we're making the rexus a little bit bigger than the dilation. So the pupil is a little smaller. And you can certainly do this technique, it's not difficult to learn. Just make it under the iris, have faith you know where it is. Now we anticipate the pupil is going to come down during surgery. So let's get the nucleus out of the capsular bag with some gentle hydrodissection. There it is. And now let's make sure it stays above that pupil edge. Now the nucleus itself is holding the pupil open and keeping the iris away and preventing it from flopping around. And the iris is holding the nucleus, so the nucleus stays still. We can buzz in here with the phaco probe, get the chopper around the other side, and chop it into two halves right away. So now that we have two halves, we can emulsify the first half. And you can see this patient has a reasonable amount of nuclear sclerosis. It's not a very soft cataract. But yet we can just apply a very minimal amount of phaco energy using mostly aspiration, some phaco power modulations, and we're able to emulsify the first half relatively quickly. Here's the second half, which we can chop again into quarters and emulsify each quarter. Notice that we try to operate at about the iris plane. We don't want to ride the corneal endothelium. Don't stay too close to the cornea. We don't want to damage the endothelial cells. And we have plenty of viscoelastic to protect that cornea. This patient ends up with a perfectly clear cornea on post-op day one. Last bit of the lens material being removed here. No more nuclear chips. And now we're ready for cortex removal. And you can see the pupil now has come down just a little bit smaller. In performing the irrigation and aspiration, we want to be very careful to remove all of it because we don't have a direct view of 360 degrees of the capsular bag equator. So we'll remove as much as we can here. Now at this point, we're happy that the infusion pressure, which is a little on the high side, has been used to help expand the pupil. So we've cleaned up pretty well here, cleaning out the anterior chamber, making sure there are no little fragments left, removing some of that dispersive viscoelastic. And then as we'll come out of the eye, you'll notice the pupil is going to become smaller again. There it is. So when we don't have that infusion pressure holding it, it becomes smaller. So we'll refill the capsule bag now with a cohesive viscoelastic, and we can see just barely the edge of the capsule rexus. The eye well is going to be a single piece acrylic lens. We're going to put that in the capsular bag. So fixating the eye, delivering the lens, and there it goes quite nicely. I'm going to make sure the lens goes completely within the capsular bag. Very important here, if you don't have a great direct view, to make sure the lens is sufficiently deep in the capsular bag so that both haptics end up in the bag as well. We know these haptics do not perform well if they're in the sulcus. Now at this point, the lens is in good position. We'll take the eye probe and go inside here, and we'll remove all our viscoelastic. Notice again, the infusion pressure expands the pupil, and we can see quite clearly that there's a good overlap of the edge of the optic by the capsular axis, and also we can see there's no residual lens material or cortex remaining in the eye. Just removing more of the viscoelastic, setting up the lens, 
And you can see that that lens is, of course, six millimeters. So even here in the maximally expanded state, it's probably a five and a half millimeter pupil. And here at the end, it comes down to probably four millimeters. So in a case like this, I really do think you'll do a good job and a beautiful result with simply using these techniques. And you don't need iris hooks. You don't need a pupil expansion ring. Thanks for watching.